hello all in this video i am going to discuss about an cranes msp430 starter kit now let us see the msp430 microcontroller how it is going to be looking here you can see that here we have an msp430 f2013 microcontroller as you all know that it is a 14 pin microcontroller you can see you can see all the 14 pins here okay then for an dumping and programming to an MSP430 it has been interfaced with a spy by wire interface and this part is called as a debugging interface through an USB port. Along with this pin it has been called as a detachable MSP430. Ok now let us, now I hope everyone knows the internal architecture of an MSP430 F2013. As you all know that it has in two ports, port 1 supports all the 8 pins and port 2 supports only 2 pin that is in 6 and 7 and as you all know that it has in timers block, watchdog timer, universal serial interface and an analog to din digital converter blocks all those things it is going to be supported by this particular MSP430F 2013. With that assumption, I will just proceed to this uh, Cranes MSP430 starter kit. What we have been discussed uh, in previous slide, that microcontroller is attached here, okay, on a PCB and it PCB has a lot of peripherals. Okay, now let us see that how it has been connected to all the peripherals. Okay, firstly you can see here we have an 8 LED pins, okay then here we can see an 4 7 segment leds and we have an lcd interface and here we have an keypad that is an 5 cross 4 then here i can see an audio like an output that is being used for an DAC output and here it has an connection for a stepper motor and here it has a connection for a dc motor then here we can see a temperature sensor and then analog to digital conversion block. These are the peripherals it is connected but we know that MSP430F 2013 is having in two ports. How I can get that two port access? The two port access is here you can see here this is in port 1 8 pins we can get a connection and here from a port 2 another two pins it has been located here. Ok, as you all know that it is been having an only two ports, port 1 and then port 2, here I can see a lot of peripherals. How all those peripherals have been connected, ok, whether it has been connected to an GPIO pins or through an any serial communication pins, how it has been connected, let us see. Then along with that one, here we have an DIP switches, ok, here also we have an 8 DIP switches. It is nothing but an, it is going to control any of our one microcontroller. It acts as an just an enable pin to enable an LED or an 7 segment display and an LCD, keypad, DAC output, stepper motor, DC motor and ADC to temperature sensors. For all those things we have an DIP switches. In upcoming slide I will show that which pin is going to control which pin ok this one you can call it as an DIP1 this side you can call it DIP switch 8 ok if you try to see the internal PCB layout diagram here we have an MSB430 here we have an DIP switches here we it shows that port pins of an LED has been connected then here it has an 7 segment LCD then keypad DAC, <coughs> ADC temperature sensors and here we have an stepper motor connection and then DC motor connections then port 1 and then port 2. These things we have been seen there but uh, don't think that it has been connected through a single line that it's just an or you can see that how it has been connected. Now let us see which of the peripheral is connected through what. Ok, GPIO means you know it, general purpose input output based, for that one it has been connected to an LED. Ok, as you know that we have an 8 LEDs, if I use an port 1 connection I can enable all those LEDs. Then for DC motor interface, 
we are going for an io based and for stepper motor interface we are going for an io based and also for an dac we are going for an io based but for an peripherals lcd and an analog to digital converter and seven segment display and then keypad okay here i have missed a keypad for that keypad it is going to use an i2c based communication okay if you want to see generally in this diagram you can get a clear idea okay this gpio here it has been connected through led dc motor stepper motor and tac for all these four peripherals we can go for a port gpio based then for communicating to adc or lcd or seven segment keypad we need to go for a iic means it is an i square c protocol okay through that particular protocol we are going to control then i have told that for all the peripherals we have a dip switch control it just acts as an enable if you are not on that particular switch your msp430 star cranes msp430 starter kit is not going to work for in order to enable an lcd screen you need to switch on the first switch then in order to enable an seven segment display you need to turn on switch 2 then in order to enable an keypad you need to go for switch 3 then for the stepper motor you need to enable switch 4 and then switch 5 is for dc motor and switch 6 is for adc switch 7 is. now let us see the software part how we need to write and program in a software and what are the procedures we need to make sure to run the program okay now i have been opened an ir embedded workbench once you open the software the same thing you need to follow what you have been following for a software first take and create new project but here we are going to program an msv430 through an c programming that's why i need to choose an c main okay okay then i need to specify the path where i am going to do the programming okay for individual project you create a new folder just here i'm creating it as a demo then the file name also i will simply give it as a demo i will save it once i have saved this part by default it comes here this particular structure here i need to make sure that i am been using an msp 430f 2013.h header file you need to change and you need to write the code as per your application whether it is an led or stepper motor or an dac or keypad seven segment display that thing you will be seeing in an upcoming video lectures okay just i will tell the options what all the things you need to make mandatory for all the program okay here you need to right click you need to go for an option there you need to choose the which particular board you are targeting here it by default it has an msp 430f149 i need to choose msp 430 2013 okay i have choose this one once i have choose this one then i need to go for an linker in the linker i need to go for an output you just tick the allow spy by wire extra output file specific then go for an extra output you specify generate extra output file here you specify output format to msp430 txt then you come for a debugger here you choose the simulator to fet debugger okay this is the default you need to do for all the programs once you are done this one just you need to go for a project rebuild all okay just uh, save the file name with earlier what you have been given save okay once it has been showed without an any error here are not written in any code you need to write for an application requirement in upcoming video lecturers you will be doing that once you have got this one just you need to go for a project download and then debug earlier you were using a debug without downloading now you use an download and debug that will dump the program into an msp430 board 
then you just you need to give this run command then automatically it is going to be running okay if i give if i run now in this software in for a time being you are not connected it may show an error okay those things it will be discussed in the upcoming video lectures thank you for watching